My name's Sandy Miller. I'm a Wurringal woman from the far west coast of South Australia. Been living away from that community now um, for about 30 or 40 years, although I come and go. I've had a very long history of uh, working in the public service, um, from being a nurse to a social worker and then a senior administrator. Um, I was diagnosed with breast cancer about seven years ago. I found it a nuisance actually. <laughs> I thought it was disrupting my life. I had other things I had to do. It's a strange thing, but I actually don't think I was affected very much by it at all. I didn't see it as something that was going to end my life. It's much more important to get on with living, to get on with, with um, you know, leading a really healthy lifestyle. As the research that's been done and the stats that have been taken is showing that Aboriginal people are dying of cancers that the rest of the community is in fact um, surviving from. We've got Aboriginal controlled health services throughout the whole state. Um, what we're finding though is that people who are diagnosed with cancer often don't even talk to their service providers about it, um, don't seek ongoing treatment um, and you know, there's, I, I know of a couple of cases where siblings um, who are in their 60s and 70s have been diagnosed almost at the same time with the same cancer and one has decided to have treatment and the other hasn't and of course the one who hasn't uh, has in fact passed away. Historically they've seen people dying from cancer and they have assumed that that's it. If you get cancer you're going to die so there's no point in talking about it with anyone. One of the reasons that we've decided to have these conversations is to get the Aboriginal community to actually talk about it and to at least acknowledge that it's happening and for people to be much more aware of what's going on in their own families. Um, it's not happening at the moment. People say, you know, look, it's, a, it, it's personal. I don't want to talk about it. Um, I'm not sharing this. And I've been really surprised by the number of individuals I've come across who are aware that someone in their family or, or one of their best mates has got cancer, but they don't know what it is and how the person's dealing with it. So people just don't have the conversation. It's very clear that it wouldn't take a lot to get some individuals to take a bit more responsibility for their health. They just need some advice and some guidance and sometimes to get for someone to walk them through a system. Um, and I think that that's probably what's missing and what's needed at the moment uh, if we're going to turn this around. We have to take responsibility for um, follow-up treatment for um, you know, what's going on in our own lives really. You've um, you know, had some medical intervention, it doesn't stop there. Um, not only do you have to follow up with your medical intervention, you've also got to take responsibility for the way that you then treat your body um, in an ongoing way and that is you know eating well and exercising and um, just those things can make a huge difference to the way your overall health will end up.